Welcome to Sumster Games, the place to find new strategy games. When we talk about Rome, we immediately think of the great philosophers or the great political leaders or the great generals, but rarely we think about the actual soldiers who fought in these wars. Well, this game is going to change that because we're going to live a legionary's life. So let's start a new game. Now the way this works is sort of like a roguelike element I ish. Essentially when you die you start over but you get sort of bonuses from the previous death. So you get like extra points that you can um, put to money or to better equipment or to better stats and stuff like that. So in the beginning you can have a balanced character, a smart character or a physical character. So first of all let me talk to you about the different stats. So strength is to sort of help determine how much damage you do depending on the weapon and stuff like that. Endurance is for fatigue. Now in this game you have sort of like three di different mechanics. You have health, stance and fatigue. And endurance is sort of helping you out to not to get too tired and be able to sort of handle uh, consecutive fights and or different consecutive events better. Constitution is just plain health. Quickness is very interesting because quickness helps you out. If you have very high quickness, you might be able to do things, uh, to do maybe two actions while the enemy just does one. So that can be pretty cool. Coordination is what I care about the most. And I'll tell you why. Coordination helps you with stance. And stance is pretty important, especially in the start of the game. You need to have a good stance to be able to, to be able to sort of, you know, hurt the enemy. So I want to have very good coordination so my stance can remain well. Because if you have good stance you can do better damage and stuff like that. Then we have sort of like the mental part. So charisma determines how much people like you. That's important for example if you want to do sparring with people. Or you're going to do different events. Like it's good if they like you. Intellect is how smart. And awareness helps you with feints. Which is pretty important when you're trying to regain energy. You know get rid of fatigue similarly to, uh, to endurance. Okay, we're gonna grab this guy. We have 74 strength, 71 constitution. That's that's a lot of health. We're pretty smart. Charisma, awareness, kind of medium. Pretty bad endurance. We're gonna get tired quickly, but I think we can handle that. Quickness, not the greatest, but I really love the constitution and the strength, so we're gonna go all in on that. Okay, so because we have a naming and I have a patron, thank you so much for that. I'm going to use the naming for the patron, so we're gonna call him the Xemex. The Great. Because I have a strong soldier and I want everybody to see that. So we're going to call him Xamax the Great. Let's go. Now, we have 25 points left. Every time a previous character dies, you get some points from that. So we can use it to increase some of our stats. We could, for example, increase our endurance a little bit. You could also get this, but this costs 4,000, so we don't have enough for that. You could alternatively try to get a better weapon, but I think the, the stats are probably the most important. The first war lasted for over 20 years. Conflict had been only a matter of time once the relentless expansions of Rome came close to the huge Carthaginian sphere of influence. A young power propelled by a staggering self-confidence, Rome had most of the Italic Peninsula under its control at the time. On the other side was the Punic city of Carthage, a centuries-old naval colossus dominating the western Great Sea, and an insurmountable gap in power and prestige seems to divide the two cities. Unexpectedly, the Roman Republic emerged victorious, incomplete as the victory was. Building upon its success, the city's maritime territory grew larger and more secure, while humiliating conditions well beyond the actual extent of the defeat were imposed upon Carthage. Nevertheless, the price was tremendous for both parties. Some say that not even Alexander's conquest devoured so many lives. <laughs> okay. It all pales compared to what was to come. The truth that follow lasted for a generation. You were a child when the situation hovered on the brink of war once again. You still remember the talk in Rome back then, when everybody expected the looming conflict to take place in the distant colonies of Hispania to the west. Now that an attack by sea was nigh impossible. The astonishment when the news reached the city is still fresh in your memory. A bold, not yet thirty, Carthaginian general named Hannibal Barca had led an army through the lands of the fierce Gauls and across the mountains to the north. The war was here, in Italia, a few hundred miles from Rome itself. It's about to begin. The following years were marked by growing panic as reports of whole armies annihilated by Hannibal kept coming. The Punic general was stronger, smarter than anything Rome had ever faced before. 
Yet his attempts to turn the Italic allies on the Republic was unsuccessful. Defeating him in a pitched battle was beyond the realms of possibility, that much was clear to the Romans. At the same time, he could not lay siege to the capital. The conflict turned into an endless war of attrition. I hate wars of attrition, it's just like, oh, let me fight them. I hate it when my armies die, just like, bam, it's just like, you know. And imagine in real life, that's like so much worse than in the game. Meanwhile, another war was being fought in far away Hispania, crucial to prevent reinforcements from joining Hannibal. About a year ago, the Roman legions were soundly defeated in their comrades. Uh, sorry, and their commanders, Proconsul Publius Cornelius Scipio and his brother Gnaeus were killed. What little remained of the army was now controlling a small patch of land. Even after informants joined the survivors, the situation looked more desperate than ever. Can we handle it? When the Centuriate Assembly had to appoint a new proconsul, only Scipio's son, a young man still in his twenties, stepped forward. No one else wished to take on such a hopeless assignment. You, on the other hand, had no choice at all. Right after you had come of age, you were enrolled in a freshly raised legion, part of the second 11,000 strong reinforcements bound to accompany the new proconsul. After a brief training period, you embarked on a long journey to Hispania. I have reached your destination and joined what is left of the previous army. Apparently within the Romans out of the picture, the Carthaginians have divided into three large hosts, each of them at last at least as big as your current force. They're a long way from your headquarters, committed to securing the whole region. So far away from your home that you can hardly comprehend the distance, with little to no chance of ever securing your family again. Deprived of most of the rights you held as a civilian, you feel strangely calm as you prefer to face the hardships to come. So we start off with somewhat like a relaxing time where we kind of have some time left before the actual battle begins. So a couple things you can do. We can train or work out. We can buy soul stuff. We don't really have money for that. We can do leisure like lax or we can do misc which is like get extra patrol, extra guard, extra offer sacrifice and stuff like that. So we're going to start off with training. We want to train our, sh our sword skills. So we're going to do a solo practice. See something's happening. Two fellow soldiers are playing dice next to you. Suddenly, the one named Metellus turns on Valensus and calls him a cheater. You have been observing the two of them for some time, and Valensus' winning streak is not so far-fetched. Also, Metellus is notorious for his b bad temper. Um, so we're going to defend Volusenus. You step in siding with Valensus. Very, very soon, others follow your lead. After a heated argument, Metellus gives up and leaves cursing. Clearly relief, Rosanos thanks you for helping out. So our opinion of the troops has increased for us. That's pretty great because if you have a good opinion of troops, you can train with them. You can do the spine, which can help you get your shield thing. And uh, especially if you spare with good people, that really helps out. So uh, but we're going to keep doing solo practice. Now, if you practice too much, you get over exercise stress, which uh, is, is bad. So you need to lower the higher it is, the lower your morale gets. So you want to make sure it doesn't get too high. I'm gonna try to spy with any, everyone and focus on my shield skill. Okay, we've gotten a little bit of a shield skill. Let's try this again. This time we didn't get better. So we need to lower our stress. We can do that by either getting an extra guard because it's boring. It lowers our stress, but it does lower our morale as well. This is our morale. So instead, we're going to do some sort of relaxing stuff. We can hang around which has a chance of making other people like me based on my charisma. We can play dice. This is pretty cool. You might lose or win money, but it increases your morale quite a bit and makes everybody like you usually. You can play a board game. This depends on your intellect. I don't quite remember what our intellect is. Or we can have fun with a woman and it's going to cost us some money and we'll lose our weird cue. So instead, we're going to play the dice. Okay, so we have increased uh, our opinion a little bit. Is it good enough to get? No, it's still pretty bad. So we might try. Let's keep doing the solo practice. That has the biggest chance of getting me something. I'm gonna try sparring just to see if I could. Yes, I got a shield skill, which is pretty. Let's try it one more time. Cool. So you can see the skills. We have 36 in sword, 32 in shield, 29 in javelin. 30 is kind of like beginner, and the higher it gets, the better you are at it. So we want to re I'll play some more dice again. Got some time. We've got an extra money, which is pretty cool. We've known Quintus Lavinius since you were kids. Now he's in the same maniple as you. Well, I like that. Xamex and Twin Quintus. Sounds uh, has a nice ring to it. We're gonna be brothers in combat. We've noticed that he's been acting very nervously as of late. What's wrong? Come on. After all the presentation, he convinced him to spit it out. Remember that Quintus lost his father in the disaster of Canae about six years ago. Then again, there's hardly anyone in Rome who has not lost someone on that previous day. 
The leaders believed that they could crush Hannibal's army by sheer force of numbers. He proved them wrong. The harshness doesn't ever taught in living memory. Quintus has been waiting for a chance to fight back for such a long time, and yet now that his opponent is drawing near, his fear of dying the impending battles is prevailing. Don't be afraid, I've got you, Quintus. One can hardly blame him, considering that your armies face disaster on disaster since the war began. Yeah, our leaders are not the greatest. After sharing his concerns with you, Quintus has looks overtly relieved and thanks you for the talk, goes about his business. We have increased virtue and the troops likes us more. Two playing dice? Ooh. You're stuck with an especially aggressive sparring partner this morning. Dacius has been here in Hispania since long before your arrival. He's one of the survivors of last year's debacle. His blade has come dangerously close to your throat twice already. Even a wooden practice sword can be lethal when it's used like that. Attempt a spectacular counter-strike? Ooh, your clumsy attack is easily dodged. Dacius steps aside and you lose balance, falling to the ground. He looks at you shaking his head. Even the Saturian makes a mocking remark. Oh no, that was a fail. Getting back on your feet to try to shrug off the embarrassment and keep going till the end of the practice session. Let's play some more dice. Okay, we need to go practice. I want to work out. We get a run, which increases our quickness and endurance, coordination and endurance, or strength and constitution. Let's do swimming. Coordination and endurance. Okay, we get a lot of... Oh, let's try some running. Oh, and we need to, we need to relax. Let's play some dice. Okay. Time is over. We must move on. The camp bursts into activity as the whole army prepares to leave. You march to the south. It doesn't take long for a destination to become apparent. You're bound for New Carthage, the capital of the Carthaginian colonies here in Hispania. It's a daring move and very risky. Several days later, you reach your destination and set camp not far from the city. According to Camp Talk, the closest enemy army is about 10 days' march from here. A long siege is out of the question, you'll have to take New Carthage by storm. Cast a glance at the city walls, strong stone walls. The thought of fighting your way up there makes your stomach churn. It's hard not to think that you may be looking at the place where your days will end. The next morning, your manip was among the first to move out of the camp and reach the plain right in front of the city. What your centurion said is true, the garrison of New Carthage consists of a small mercenary army possibly thousand strong across the city militia. You're taking your place on the battlefield and all of a sudden cries of alarm rise from the ranks. Ah! You look ahead with a start. The city gate is wide open. A screaming mass numbering thousand leaves the city of the walls, quickly closing the gap with your partially deployed first line. Judging by their scanned equipment, they must be the militia. The enemy commanders wouldn't risk his precious mercenaries like this. Lord pounding in your ears to get ready to receive them as the first battle of your life in Galicia. Let's go do some fighting! Not yet. When the other side is at the right distance, you prepare to hurl your first javelin. We can just throw it anywhere we can pick up a target. Target, let's just try throwing. We're pretty good at that, apparently. Your javelin disappears into the ranks of the foe. You can't say what the damage is caused, if at all, but must have produced some confusion at least. As the other side gets closer and closer, you steal yourself for the incoming fight. So, Xamex the Great shall now fight the Militiamen. So, first thing we can choose is we can choose to throw the Javelin or we can close in. Now, before we do that, I want to talk to you about these stats. So we have the Health Bar, the Stance Bar, and the Fatigue Bar. Or Circle, I should say. When the health gets to zero by death. Stance is pretty important because if you have good stance, you have a better chance of, you know, like stopping the enemy's attack and defending yourself and stuff like that. But if you have bad stance, it's a lot easier for you to get hit or hurt or for the, yeah, to, to get hurt or and stuff. Any, essentially, anytime you sort of fail an action, generally you lose stance. So make sure that you don't pick actions that you're going to be failing at a lot. And fatigue, this is going to be like a green circle, that's how tired you are. If you're very fatigued, then it's going to be harder for you to do things. So I could try the javelin, but the chances of that are like this uh, sort of hand shows you like a thumbs up and down sort of way to show you how what is your chance. So this is about 20% chance. If this is up, it's 100%. If it's zero, it's a 0%. So my chances of hitting the javelin is actually pretty bad. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to close in. Because I don't want to lose my stance. Okay, so now we can just start off. We can attack, feint, shield, or soft spot. So attack and soft spot are attacking him. Soft spot is more to avoid armor. To put an attack, you can pick where you want to hit him. And uh, you can either just do a regular hit or you can try to bypass armor. That's why you can see this is a thumbs up at 100% because he doesn't have any armor. So there's really nothing to bypass. We can also try to feint. 
which is when you're, when you're tired, this helps you sort of recover the energy. And then we can use shield, I quite like that. So this allows me to either knock or charge down with my shield. And if I succeed at that, then I'm going to lower his stance by 64 to 80 if I do the knocking thing. Or I can do charging, it's just gonna lower it by 80 to 100. So, but I'm going to try to do the knocking thing. Now we could also pick an attitude. We could go for defensive one or attacking one. And we can see that it's changing our chances to it. So we're going to go in the medium because right now I'm charging with my strength based, not my regular attack based thing. So let's charge him. And we didn't manage to do it. So you can see it lowered my stance quite a bit. So now I need to recover. Which I fell that, which is not the greatest. Let me try recovering again. Okay, this time I recovered. That's pretty cool. And now we could try this thing again. So I'm going to try to knock his shield one more time. And I did that. So his stance is now pretty bad. So we can attack. Now we can see that our chances of attack are pretty good. However, I'm going to go in an attacking mode so we get even better chance of hitting him. And then we, I'm going to hit, hit his head. So it gives me 1.5 multiplier. So let's try that. We did some damage. And we're going to keep doing that while we can, until he essentially recovers his stance, so to speak. So let's keep going at his head. We, we fail at that, but we're still pretty good chance. So I think we're going to keep trying. Ooh, nice. We got 13 damage. A little bit more. Ooh, we fail at that. So now we need to recover. Good. Let me try to recover again. And we could attack. We have a pretty okay chance of hitting a Starzo, like 50%. So let's try. Okay, good. Because we, you do not have unlimited time in this combat, like eventually it's, it's going to change and then you no longer can uh, fight him. So I want to make sure that you sort of don't take too long. I need to recover right now. So it's the, I'm pretty tired, so that's not the greatest. But I would like to try to hit him. Oh, I don't think we're going to manage to go. We need to faint. We need to go to normal attitude and we need to try to do a quick faint. Okay, we succeeded at that. And let me try to keep attacking him. Wow, our chances of hitting him are super low. But I'm gonna have to try that because... Yeah, I feel like that. We just don't have enough rounds to fight. Oh, we have no stance. We need to recover like crazy. Okay. The enemy formation starts breaking apart. Very soon panic spits as their very ring turns into a route. And... He's seriously wounded, so we do get some bonus. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to kill him. Garden Militia is in disarray. An improved pursuit is attempted by the one guard to stop at the city gate before it can break in. And we're going to continue. Storm becomes to some of their comrades. After a brief talk, they move away from Manipal and wonder what is going on. The rest of you will storm the city walls. Many ladders are being propped up against the walls while a constant shower of missiles is raining down from the battlements. Centurion promised to share a generous portion of his reward should he manage to be the first man over the walls. I'm just going to do my best to stay alive, guys. You start climbing alongside the others trying to protect yourself as best as you can. You keep your shield high and you are unhurt by the missiles flowing from above. The cacophony is unbearable. Cries from both enemies and allies blend with the tuts of stones and smaller projectiles bouncing all around. Suddenly the noise begins to dwindle and fade. You can't believe what you're seeing. Hundreds of Roman legionnaires are running along the top of the wall coming from the north. How did they get here? Anyhow, the punics are melting before them, leaving the battlements unguarded. In the end, your allies reach the gate and open it, letting in the bulk of your legions. Let's do some more fighting. You follow your maniple into the city streets. Your orders are very clear. Secure the city by killing everything that meets you in the open. Hopefully nobody will be so ill-concerned. Your doors are interrupted when a small number of militiamen stands in your path. Ooh. So you're going to have to fight some more militiamen. I'm just going to close in again. And I'm going to try to, again, knock his shield. Because that seems to be... Oh, no, we failed at that. So we need to recover. Okay, we did that pretty well. That's good. And let me try to keep knocking his shield down. Yes. Oh, but he immediately recovered. Let's try it again. Ah, uh, we had a pretty good chance of doing that and we failed, which kind of made me sad. And he managed to recover, which is unfortunate. No! Okay, we've got extra help. That's good. Still need to recover though, which is kind of unfortunate. No, we keep fighting at recovery. I want to kill him. Come on, recover. You can do it. Yes, okay, good. Now we, we're just going to plain attack him, I think. Because we, we want to do some damage. 
Ooh, but our chance of hitting now, you know what, Lowell, let's let's keep doing shooting because the chance of hitting him is just so low. It doesn't seem to help us out much. Come on, recover. So we can knock his shield again. We had three against one and we're doing very bad now. No! Why won't you knock his shield? You're like 70% chance and we keep losing that. It's really sad. Come on, keep recovering. Okay, we hit him quite nicely, that's good. Need to recover, come on. Good. He's pretty tired, so we should have some good chances of hitting him. Okay, he is a low a stance and he's very tired, so let's try attacking. Let's try attacking his Torzo. Yes, and we killed him. Nice. Look at the malicious man, life is body, quick thoughts flickering through your head. Elation. After surviving yet another crash, you feel exhilarated with a sense of your invincibility. Our morale has increased. An officer, yell an officer yelling out orders brings you back down to earth with a bump. You move on. You keep marching along the streets as his custom looting is strictly prohibited until the battle is over. Yeah, let's stick to the rules. New Carthage is almost conquered, but 500 mercenaries from the garrison are still holding the citadel. The council is looking for volunteers for an assault on this last bastion. He's throwing in the morale in more than double Luce. Yeah, we're gonna die if we do that. These mercenaries are nothing like the militia we've been facing until now. They may not be the enemy's best troops. They wouldn't have been left here if they were, but they're still professional soldiers. Only the most experienced legionnaires are volunteering. No one would blame you if you were back off. Yeah, we're backing off. After a brief but intense struggle, the garrison surrenders. Okay. New Carthage has fallen. For the first time in so many years, a change in the tides of war appears within grabs. Your morale has increased by eight. You receive your share of loot. Your army has obtained an important base of operation. The city's resources will be invaluable for the rest of the campaign. You get extra skills in Sword, Shield, and Java. And I think this is a good time to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, write down in the comments and you can click on the right top to watch Dead Monarchy, which is a turn based combat game, or you can click on the right bottom to watch me play the governor. I'll see you in one of those. Bye bye.